Good morning, all. Welcome to St. Mary's. I am Elizabeth McEwen, and I am a licensed lay minister here at the church. And today we will be celebrating um, hope and healing um, in our service today. Uh, there are bulletins in the back there, and that is all you need. And if you ring the bells for us now, Gary, we will have to... Oh, my God. <laughs> Gary. <laughs> Uh, we will start our prelude, which gives us a wonderful time to center and uh, realize why we're here. Thank you.
nicely we've been provided with the words in our handouts. Change. 
and grant us grace to know more and more in your likeness and image through Jesus Christ, the light of the world. Please be seated. The first reading is from Lamentations, chapter 3. My soul is bereft of peace. I have forgotten what happiness is. So I say, gone is my glory and all that I had hoped for from the Lord. The thought of my affliction and my homelessness is wormwood and gall. My soul continually thinks of it and is bowed down within me. But this I call to mind and therefore I have hope. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I will hope in him. The Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the soul that seeks him. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Amen. Amen. One of my favorites, Amazing Grace. <clears throat>
The second reading is from A Song of Christ's Goodness from Anselm of Canterbury. Jesus, as a mother, you gather your people to you. You are gentle with us as a mother with her children. Often you weep over our sins and our pride. Tenderly you draw us from hatred and judgment. You comfort us in sorrow and bind up our wounds. In sickness you nurse us and with pure milk you feed us. Jesus, by your dying, we are born to a new life. By your anguish and labor, we come forth in joy. Despair turns to hope through your sweet goodness. Through your gentleness, we find comfort in fear. Your warmth gives life to the dead. Your touch makes sinners righteous. Lord Jesus, in your mercy, heal us. In your love and tenderness, remake us. May your love prepare us for the beauty of heaven. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. third reading is from Rachel Held Evans, Wholehearted Faith. For better or for worse, there are seasons when we hold our faith, and there are seasons when our faith holds us. In those latter instances, I am more thankful than ever for all the saints, past and present, who said yes, and whose faith sustains mine. They believe for me when I am not sure I believe. They hold on to hope for me when I run out of hope. They are the old lady next to me in the pew 
and the little kid behind me who recite the entirety of the Apostles' Creed on my behalf on those Sundays when I cannot bring myself to say those ancient words wholeheartedly. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God. reading is a reading taken from a commencement address to the University of Portland in 2009 by Paul Hawkins. When I see everywhere in the world are ordinary people willing to confront despair, power, and incalculable odds in order to restore some semblance of grace, justice, and beauty to this world. The poet Adrian Rich wrote, my heart is moved by all I cannot save. So much has been destroyed. I cast my lot with those who, age after age, perversely, with no extraordinary power, reconstitute the world. Humanity is coalescing. It is reconstituting the world, and the action is taking place in classrooms, farms, jungles, villages, campuses, companies, refugee camps, deserts, fisheries, and slums. You join a multitude of caring people. No one knows how many are working on the most salient issues of our day, climate change, poverty, deforestation, peace, water, hunger, conservation, human rights, and more. This is the largest movement the world has ever seen. The generations before have failed. They got distracted and lost sight of the fact that life is a miracle every moment of existence. Nature beckons you to be on her side. The most unrealistic person in the world is the cynic, not 
the dreamer. Hope makes sense only when it doesn't make sense to be hopeful. Take it and run with it as your life depends upon it. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Well, I don't know about anybody else, but I'm absolutely exhausted after two weeks of running, swimming, jumping, rowing, using your whole body in lunge positions that I don't think are possible, fencing, karate, wrestling, aerial feats of gymnastics, horseback riding, skateboarding on concrete pools, many of the new sports I've never even seen before, kite sailing on a little hydrofoil way above the water. I used to be a competitive sailor, went into my 30s, but when I sailed, we sailed through the water, not over the water. <laughs> new equipment, I cannot fathom how one maintains their balance, understands the gadgets that they're given to work with. Every day, after just finishing supper <clears throat> and settling in to such an exciting evening, I feel exhilarated, joyful to tears, laughing at the antics of the athletes, mesmerized by the bravery and awed by the astounding abilities I am witnessing. And truth be told, I'm a bit of a critic about some of the announcers, but no one's perfect. Above all, though, the stories behind the stories. They show us examples of faith, hope, and healing that we focus on in this service today. Come with me down the rabbit hole of some of the many stories of hope, healing, faith I found, which I share with you today. I certainly needed my tissues when Celine Dion sang at the opening performances of the Olympics. And to quote her, she said, I'm honored to have performed here tonight for the Paris 2024 opening ceremony and so full of joy to be back in one of my favorite cities. She also wrote, most of all, I am so happy to be celebrating others, the amazing athletes with their stories of sacrifice and determination, pain and perseverance. What she said about her own comeback, a lot of people are looking into a bag of empty hope and it's pretty dark. I feel like that for a long time until I realized that that is not living. That is not even dying. That is just being. And I didn't want to do that anymore. The attention grabbing charisma of someone like Noah Lyles is off putting to some. I saw something a little deeper. I saw a young man who as a child suffered terribly with asthma and most of his earliest years were marked by lots of hospital stays, which instilled fear, not only in the athlete, but his mother. Yet he has healed and overcome to be a gold medal winner. He attributes his success to his mother and those who didn't let his asthma become who he was. I noticed him not just waving our flag, but offering congratulations to his fellow victors and those who didn't fare as well. He did mention his faith and in this secular time in the world, I found incredibly courageous. He said, I have asthma, allergies, dyslexia, ADD, anxiety, and depression. But I will tell you that what you have does not define who you can become. Why not you? About his mental illness, he said, I couldn't get my needs out. I need to be active. I need personal connections. I need to be able to touch people. That's a love language and something that people need. And I'm definitely one of those people. His mother went racing from her seat when he was taken by, uh, in a wheelchair off the track. I'm pretty sure in echoes of the memories of hospitalizations of that asthma and yet they were there to cheer him on. Kenneth, I never pronounce this well, um, Bednarik 
who beat Lowell Lies and the 200. He was orphaned and in foster care until the age of four. And he gives his adopted mother all the credit. A lot like Jesus gave Mary the credit at Cana. Shakiri Richardson, raised by Big Mama, her grandmother, and her aunt. You have to ask, where was mother? Dig a little deeper and find out mother was into her own addiction and could not be there for her. And yet she could rise above that. She found that hope through her big mama. Simone Biles, we all know, she left the Tokyo Olympics due to a case of the twisties. As a result, she, as a result excuse me, she became an unexpected advocate for mental health took a step back when she needed to. She spoke truth to power, and so did Jesus, always challenging the status quo. She sparked a global conversation about the importance of athlete well-being and mental health in elite sports, highlighting the pressures faced by athletes and the importance of prioritizing self-care. Despite facing immense pressure and expectations, she continues to inspire athletes worldwide with her courage, her grace, and her unwavering pursuit of excellence, reminding us to ask for healing when we need to. Speaking of healing, how about Suni Lee, who just nine months prior to the games didn't know if she would be able to enter due to her two kidney diseases. And I quote, there are many times when I thought about quitting and just giving up because I was so sick. And it was just so hard to stay motivated, watching everybody get better. And I'm just like, I can't even get back into the gym, constantly doubting myself. Then she said, I am blessed and thankful, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> to be working with the best specialized medical team to treat and to manage my diagnosis. Lee has been open about the mental health challenges that come along with being a gymnast on the public eye. She says, never let life's setbacks stop you from doing and going after your dreams. Brody Malone, another gymnast, states that he healed from a bad knee injury, giving his credit to his God who used his team, his doctors, his trainers, and his earthly father to heal and support him. The refugee Olympic team this year, Yasur Mardini, fleeing from war-torn Syria and embarking on a perilous journey across the Aegean Sea, her heroism saved the lives of many fellow refugees. Her journey from refugee to Olympic swimmer symbolizes the resilience, strength, and indomitable spirit of displaced people worldwide, inspiring hope and perseverance in the face of adversity. Jerry Tuai grew up in a poor shanty town in Fiji, playing rugby with plastic bottles. He managed to go on to win the first Olympic medal for his country. Ukraine's athletes all demonstrate and state that they are there to let people know that the war does not define who they are. According to the high jumper um, and a fencer, they are at the Olympics to represent their countries as diplomats, diplomats as well as people who are competing. Some other stories behind the scenes remind me of the healing we all experience when somebody shows us just a simple kindness. The Jamaican runner from in Tokyo went to the wrong venue and wasn't going to make his event until the kindness of a stranger picked him up, took him to the proper event, and he not only entered it, I imagine a little stressed, but uh, um, he managed to get the gold that day. Then there are stories that are beyond me about sharing the prize. Two pole vaulters who shared the world title. 
Then there's the one about the woman biker from the United States who didn't make the qualifying rounds. But guess what? One of her teammates gave up their position to give it to her. She in turn rewarded that by winning two gold medals. There are other issues of equality. Non-binary team member runner Nikki Hiltz finished third on Thursday in her semifinal heat. Hiltz identifies as transgender, became the first openly transgender and non-binary athlete to advance to the individual finals. And I quote, I hope I can make life a little bit easier for the next bi non-binary person. Signs of faith and hope are evident everywhere. From physical signs, which are so obviously seen and well read by others, to rituals we see but don't hear in the mutterings we watch at the start line. Notice people on their knees or saying to the heavens, thank you. How many of us remember to make an outward and visible sign of our hope, our faith, in our journeys? A little detour on my rabbit hole journey um, I stumbled upon was um, a program called Athletes for Hope, which was founded in 2006. It was founded by a group of elite athletes who all share a common bond, a deep commitment to helping others. I just want to go over who these founders are. They include Muhammad Ali, who suffered from Parkinson's disease and yet fed and delivered food in Africa and the United States. Warwick Dunn, Detroit Lions, housing for the poor. Mia Hamm, families in need of marrow or cord blood transplants. Jackie joyner Kersey, children's education, racial equality, and women's rights. Jeff Gordon started a pediatric cancer foundation. Andre Agassi, Agassi raised over $60 million for at-risk children in Southern Nevada. And Alonzo Mooring, who's suffering from kidney disease due to the painkillers from his sports career, has become a health advocate. In their journeys, they found a common theme. They want to give back, didn't know where to begin. But Athletes for Hope was designed to bring out all types of athletes, bring them all together to educate and inspire them to channel their energy for the common goal to make a difference in the world. In our fourth reading today, and I quote again, the most unrealistic person in the world is the cynic, not the dreamer. Hope makes sense only when it doesn't make sense to be hopeful. Take it and run with it as your life depends upon it. My prayer of gratitude today is to thank God for my rose-colored glasses that make all things possible with his help. And there are two images that I want to share. I hope they're going to get through very well. But anyway, I'm going to try. There's a certain ad. Can I tell you the ad story? I have no idea. Because the only importance of this ad are these two images. The very beginning of the ad is a very small child. I would say, oh, well, three, four years old. All dressed up in some sort of little league outfit. And he's coming, he's coming into the bank in total slow motion. He's inspiring me to keep going. No one said you had to do a pass. No one said you had to get through. Right? And the other, it ends with this small child with a soccer ball in his hands. And he definitely comes up to the, there's no one in the net. He stands there with his little ball.
I just want to announce that after the prayers of the people, there will be two prayer ministers over in that corner for the laying on of hands, because today is the second Sunday of the month, and we always have a healing. And you'll respond for the whether it's in bold printing. Together we lift our lives, our prayers to you, O God of hope and healing. God the Father, you breathe life into your whole creation. Help us breathe deeply in peace To have hope is to continue affirming that it is possible. God the Son, you give us yourself to make our joy complete. Help us to our fear, pain, and grief to you. To have hope is to be a messenger of God, tearing down walls, destroying words, building bridges. Holy Trinity, one God, accept our thanks and praise for all the blessings of this life, especially for those blessings that our present circumstances make difficult to see. To have hope is to, to leave, leave the door open, open so that to the, the Spirit can enter and make all things new. Shed the light of your healing love on all who are sick in body, mind, or spirit, that they may find new wholesome illuminated, illumined by your grace. O Lord, hear our prayer. Grant to all who turn to you the courage to participate with you in restoring this broken world to wholeness so that everyone and everything may share in the hope of your kingdom. Oh. Lord, hear At this time, I invite your prayers of thanksgiving or intersection, either silently or aloud. My own intercession is for all the people suffering in wars, especially the children, and pray that these wars will end and they can have hope for a better life. At St. Mary's today, in the World Cycle of Prayer, we pray for the Anglican Church of Korea. In the Diocesan Cycle of Prayer, we pray for St. Luke's, St. Albans, and the Constellation Partners. There are no birthdays, anniversaries, or baptisms listed on St. Mary's Church calendar. Are there any to be celebrated? I celebrate the wedding of my neighbors yesterday, As loving children of God, we lift up our prayers for the following people, Matthew, Walter and Terry, Edna, Tamara, Tom, Marcy, Emma, Billy, Joseph C., Gregory, Joy, Victoria, Bob, Brenda, Cheryl, Tom E., Joey, Karen, Pauline, Cooper, Gary, Paul, Debbie F., Bev, Joyce P., Brittany, and Eric. Glorious God, you are close to us no matter how far from we feel from you. Excuse me, I'm having trouble with my vision this morning. Try this again. Glorious God, you are close to us no matter how far we feel from you. Draw us into your very heart of your grace and help us to live into the truth that nothing in all creation can separate us from your hope, healing, and love. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
for us to offer one another our exchange of peace. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. The peace of God be always with you. Also with you. Please offer one another our son. Let us pray. Creator of mist and mystery, you roll away the stones to open us to your life, to let your story shine out in all the world. Give us hope, living God, hope in our hands to open doors, hope in our eyes to see possibilities, hope in our hearts to live by faith. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, the hope of the world. And Dick, announcements, please. Good morning, and welcome to Eric on Zoom. <laughs> OK, thank you, Elizabeth, this morning for officiating and being our homilist. Uh, good words today. <laughs> uh, Helen, for our readings and for our prayers of the people. Uh, Michael, our organist and pianist and musician. 
dug in the back corner for our Zoom host. A couple of things. This week, uh, Tuesday evening, at, I think we're going to do 5.30, will be the vestry meeting for this month. So uh, we've sent out a notice on that today. Uh, downstairs, you will find COVID test kits, a whole box of them. Please take some for you, take some for your neighbors, especially elderly, if you know people. Uh, please distribute these. We have a whole case, and they're not going to do any good in the parish hall. <laughs> so um, I think that uh, we had a blessing yesterday and today with the weather after the rain. And uh, I think here in southern Vermont, we kind of missed the bullet. So I think we did all right. We, at our house, we had a little bit less than an inch of rain, which was manageable. So have a good week. And uh, please, if, if you haven't, if you're not getting our newsletter, please sign up in the back. Uh, that way you will. We'll make sure we get you on our email list. And please come downstairs. We have a lot of food for, the, for our uh, coffee hour. We'd like to see you all down there. Thank you. Please stand and join us in the closing hymn, 12 Gates to the City. Um, and I, I realized that the version of the hymn I found had quite different lyrics than the one that's in your program. <laughs> so it, it didn't exactly fit. So there's a version that's number 10 in Leave Us. If you can find that, uh, we will sing that version. Number 10 in this book. Black and red. Number 10. Thank, Thank you, you, Michael, Here. for that. Thank you. I appreciate Thank you. it. closing prayer today as we have seen these past weeks peace is possible healing happens the young people of the world their coaches mentors families 
made it possible for them to lead the way. They have attested to the Lord that non-judgment, love, is an answer. Follow the way laid out so clearly for us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Let us go in peace. And just a reminder, after the prelude, we'd love to see you all for coffee. Thank you. Um,